one thing I know for sure is when I have a man, he is going to come home to peace. He's not going to be coming to a war zone. If he's having problems, issues at work, he's going to know he's going to come home to me and he's going to feel 10 times better. Whatever I need to do to make him feel better, that's what I'm going to do. We could lay down together while I rub his head. Whatever he wants, I'm going to make sure he's feeling better. Men go through so much and they don't like to say what is going on with them. They act like everything's fine. Just make sure at the end of the day, when he comes home to you, it's not a war zone. He's going to know everything's going to be okay. Like once he sees you, everything just goes away. All his problems, everything. Just make sure you treat that man right, especially when he's being a man to you. You want to get cut out quick talk to a man any kind of way cussing at him insults whether it's targeted at his ego or his manhood talking to him like he a child you can't do that because if they ain't gonna let nobody out there in the streets talk to them like that what make you think you can talk to them like that well if he was a real man if he was a good man he wouldn't have me acting like that no you acting like that because you think as a woman you can do that but a real man gonna show you quick he ain't the one to play with No man leaves because you made a mistake. They leave because you made it a habit. Too many women get comfortable disrespecting their men. Can I talk to the king in you for a second? I just want you to know that you're special. I just want you to know that you are worth loving. That you're unique. You're not average. There's nothing mediocre about you. You're actually worth something. So I need you to stand in that. I want you to embrace that. I want you to be the king that you are. Not because I said so, but I want you to know that it's inside of you. It's not on you. All right, guys. I'm going to say another thing that's truth, but probably going to piss some people off. Every woman doesn't deserve a good man. I know, I know. Probably shocking, but let me break it down for you. For all these boss babes out there, have these six-figure incomes, you don't need a man, you just want them. All these women who post about how trash men are. Well, if you have these high-income jobs, as you talk about, you understand that to get certain positions, you had to qualify for the job. Now, what are qualifications? Maybe it's the education. Maybe it's the experience. Maybe it's just who you know. But at the end of the day, there's qualifications to set you apart from everybody else who just wants it. It's the same when it comes to men, good men. If you want a good man, you should have to qualify. Are you a good woman? Are you going to contribute to the relationship in the ways that a man simply can't on his own? Are you going to build him up? Are you going to be his peace? Are you going to help him see other perspectives? Are you going to understand him? Are you going to be the person he can lean on when he has those moments that he needs to just vent? If not, how do you qualify? Fellas, don't walk, but run and go get a paternity test. Because a woman will mess with you and be already pregnant. She said, oh, who's the weak link? <gasps> Him right there. Here, and throw that pussy on you. Pussy can. Be already two months pregnant. You wonder, like, the baby come kind of early, huh? Better start doing that math. That baby come kind of early, huh? That baby a good little size. Yeah. Motherfucker was already pregnant. Don't walk. Run. Go get them babies tested. Look at paternity court. Look at all them women that was lying to their kids. Talk about, he didn't call you. He didn't love you. Putting all them negative thoughts in their kids. Head. He didn't love you. They ain't even got them there. Why do some black women require a man to make a hundred thousand dollars that's all that you're really hearing on social media that a man has to make a hundred thousand dollars i don't know where that figure came from 
some of these women aren't even making a hundred thousand dollars. It's kind of weird. But why don't these same women, when they go and date a stud, why don't they require a stud to make a hundred thousand dollars? And some of those relationships, these same women that want a man to make a hundred thousand dollars are sitting up in relationships with studs and taking care of them. Make it make sense to me. I said what I said. And my name is Shalakemia. One thing about me, when I date a guy, I love to hype him up. I love to pour all types of love into him. I love to tell him how good he looks, how good he smells, how his arms look good. I love to pour love into my man so that when he goes into this world, he is confident and he knows he is loved. And if he does try to talk to another chick, that's all right, baby, because guess what? She going to send you right back the fuck home because once she see who the fuck you really are and how you really ain't nothing, she going to send you right back home. And that's just to prove to you and teach you, baby, don't nobody want you but me okay i built you up and all that so you can have that confidence for the world so that you know you ain't gonna get no love like big mama peaches love so stop with all the foolery okay i like you i want you <laughs> nobody else they don't want you i do so so stop all right just come and be my king and settle on down settle on down Listen, no man want to ran through kitty. So if your kitty been ran through and everybody know that you've been passed around and the man know that you're easy, he's just going to be using you. So you're just going to be on his roster and he's going to use you. No man want a woman that he can't walk proud with in the street or he could look at and be like, you know what? I really like her or she's a nice girl and nobody had her. Everybody, every man want that one woman that nobody touch. So you think hoeing out here? Will work out for you in the end no it's not so before you go get ran through train or you have a bunch of baby and um just remember your odds are lessen so don't try to think you're gonna be ran through by the community or every man done had you and now you want to settle down you didn't know you wanted to settle down before you got ran through so i'm going to say it one more time don't get ran through because your odds are lessen. Okay. Never underestimate men. Men are much smarter than you think. Men are so smart that they treat you how they view you. Let's talk about it. Men don't take women to five-star restaurants who don't look or carry themselves like a five-star chick. Let's be realistic. A man don't give you first-class treatment when you carry yourself in a very low-class manner. Why would he? A man is not your father. Therefore, don't expect him to do things for you that your own father never did for you. First experiences usually come from your father. High-value men don't take unexposed women to high-end places. Due to your lack of exposure, he's afraid that you won't know how to behave and sees you as a risk factor. Smart men don't have intelligent conversation with unintelligent women. They know that you can't relate, so they keep the conversation relatable and childish because he knows that you are temporary. Therefore, make sure that you are a reflection of your requirements and your expectations. Again, men are very smart, and they treat you exactly how they view you. Be smart, they smart. Choose wisely, that nation. And remember, I told you. So I just listened to a woman come on here and say that a man who pretends to be broke and then ends up actually having money is a red flag. So let's follow the bouncing ball. Why? Is it because he lied? Because women lie too. I mean, if you show up to a date and you're not in your natural state, you're lying. That's not what his children are going to have the makeup of, right? Okay. Or is it because you want to know how much money he has so that you can make sure you get some of that. Because if he has money, he needs to be taking you somewhere else. If you went on a date with a man and you thought he was broke and you were cool with it, then why would it bother you that he has money? It's none of your business. If you're not married to this man, what he has in his bank account, it's not yours. Like, you don't, he doesn't owe you anything. 
this man doesn't owe you anything. Just like women are saying, well, taking me on a date and taking me to all these places and spending all this money doesn't mean that you, you, that I owe you sex. Okay, cool. This man does not owe you anything. He doesn't know, owe you anything about his money, about what he has, his assets, his car, his house, none of it. You can't have it both ways. You can't have women out here get to do whatever they want to do, held to no standard, and then men are supposed to be out here to be a victim. You are the women he's protecting himself from. Congratulations. Now he knows. One of women's major complaints today is that men up to date don't act like men back in the day they don't take their time out to court women anymore they're not intentional about seeking out to be in a relationship with women they are shying away from commitment they don't really care to protect women they don't care to provide for women they don't care to tolerate women at all unless it's just sexual and nobody can seem to figure it out well i got the answer Women have decided we no longer need to impress men and the ones who do want to go out of their way for a man that they may be interested in or actually with, they are shamed and made to feel like that they are doing something wrong for seeing a man pass the tangibles. Everything that men have asked for, women have shunned them and said that we're not doing those things for you. We're doing them to appease ourselves. Everything is in the antithesis of men. So much to the point where women have decided that they no longer have a need for men past his provisional aspects, such as him having money or such as him just having great sex. And somewhere along the lines, we've lied to ourselves and said men only objectify us and want sex for us. So in return, you want to play the man's game and try to do it back. But then when they start telling you that they want things like a woman who can think or a woman who's actually going to be a partner or a woman who can provide them a form of companionship or a woman who brings them peace or a woman who can read the room a woman who can listen a woman who knows how to cook clean nurture and care for a house a woman who's tentative all of those things seem to be off your radar we taken cooking and cleaning and equated it to slavery which i have no idea why we would be so disrespectful to our ancestors because slavery was not just simply house chores we've taken something so simple as hey maybe you're overreacting to oh he's gaslighting us calling them narcissists and disregarding all of their boundaries even so much as the clothing there is nothing there left to the imagination because everything that he may aspire to get so can every other man See, it's so easy to see a woman post her ass and her titties on the timeline or even walk outside with everything on but the armor of the Lord. And when he asks for a picture, all of a sudden you tense up like he just wants to objectify you when actually you're just confused and you're not consistent with the message that you're sending. Women have found a way to say we don't need to impress men. Men need to impress us. But when they tell you what they want, you call them bad bitches. You say that they want to be the new women when they express their disdain or certain hatred you call them sassy nothing is ever just introspectively saying hey <laughs> maybe i'll act like my mama maybe i'll act like my grandmama maybe i'll act like my aunties because you thought those women were weak in order to keep a man you thought that they were a pick me but maybe it would be wise to take a page out of their book because they had a far better success rate with getting men to do exactly what they needed them to do simply honoring their word we've lost the plot women no longer understand the power of the p if you know what i mean some would say that men found their worth that's why they have stopped doing things for women because it's so easy to get out of you nowadays so maybe when women start to be a little bit more impressive towards men again and they start doing all the things that men desire in order to get a woman we could have them like put it in our hands start being impressive <laughs> you wouldn't complain about what a man don't do for you Good men are hard to find. I totally agree with you. Good men are hard to find because good men aren't looking for you. Good men are hard to find because good men are busy working, climbing corporate ladders, chasing success, building businesses, building themselves and their future. Good men are hard to find because good men don't do nightclubs, strip joints, on dating apps, on Instagram, liking women, pictures sliding in their DMs. Good men don't find their women that way. Low value men do. Good men are just like good women. They are very selective in their personal search. They're not turned on by women with big butts, big tits, and who have the intelligence of a rock. Instagram models do not impress them. They have outgrown that phase of their life. 
Good men don't settle down with women who are not in alignment with their future goals. Good men do not settle with women that they can grow with and become their best self because they know selecting the wrong woman, just like selecting the wrong man, can be detrimental to their success and their overall well-being. So yes, I totally agree with you. Good men are hard to find because good men are setting themselves up for a good woman to become a good husband. Be smart, day smart, choose wisely, that nation. And remember, I told you. Three things you should never say to a boy. Number one, how much money do you have? How much money they make has nothing to do with you, honestly. Like, it's really annoying when people are like, oh, how much money do you make? Oh, well, you don't have enough to support me. You know, I thought we passed those times, those traditional roles of women and men. But it also depends on the circumstance as well. Like, if y'all been together for a long time, then okay, yeah, it's cool to talk about money. But when you first start dating, why are you worried about what's in their pockets? Go cool, there! Number two, you're so emotional. I just feel like you shouldn't tell boys they're emotional. I feel like they already go through enough, like, literally with society. They're like, oh, well, boys have to be tough. Boys have to be strong. Mm, no, they don't. And just because you're showing your emotions does not mean that you're being soft or emotional. It just means you're being human. And if somebody tells you otherwise, then they're wrong. Number three, you're so short. Not everybody can be green giants. Not everybody can be eight feet tall. And I just feel like as a girl, you are three feet. Why are you trying to date somebody 10 feet? Mm, those numbers don't add up. So how about we be real with ourselves and stop searching for Jack and the Beanstalk? Thank you. So let me get this straight. Men are expected to give husband material from day one, but women don't have to give any kind of wifey material until they get a ring. So let me get this straight. Men are expected to provide, protect, give you security, still take you on dates, pay for everything, give you husband treatment, maybe go get your oil changed, all of the things, fix stuff around your house or your apartment, take care of you, but you don't want to make the man a sandwich because you're a girlfriend and that's wifey duties. That is the stupidest advice I've ever heard on the internet and the stupidest double standard that has ever come into history in a very long time. That's like saying that if you're in an abusive relationship where he beats your ass every single day, that suddenly he's going to change his mind and he's going to change his behavior the minute that y'all are married. How that relates to no wifey duties is that men can't expect you to just organically fall into these wifey duties just because he decides to marry you. And why would he want to marry you if you're incapable of just showing human decency with commitment, security, emotional stability, the same things that you're asking for and being receptive. But a lot of these independent badass women think that they have all, their entire life together. So they actually devalue men in their lives because they don't know how to be receptive to good men in the first place. But on top of that, the irony of all of this is that if that same man matches your energy and doesn't give you husband material off the jump, then he's considered a fuckboy. If he doesn't want any commitment, he doesn't really want to take you on dates, he wants to Netflix and chill because he's matching your non-wifey duties, now he's a fuckboy. And the blame is essentially deflected back on the men. And it's pretty much common sense because why would any man want to make you a wife if you don't know how to act like a wife in the first place? Okay, bye. I am not the most perfect girlfriend. I'm not a 10 out of 10, but I'll treat you right. I'm 100% loyal. I'll pick up the house while you're at work. Make sure you come home to a home-cooked meal. And you'll always have some dessert to eat afterwards, if you know what I mean. <laughs> May the force be with you.